Greetings viewer, you join me aboard the newly facelifted Mercedes GLC. Could you repeat your input please? It is the refreshed version of Mercedes highly popular GLC. Could you repeat your input please? How do I shut you up? I'm driving the facelifted and refreshed version of the GLC that sports the brand's new 2 liter diesel engine which is a designated 300D in this case. Now I know you'd normally associate something called the 300 maybe with a 3 liter V6 but this 2 liter actually makes pretty much as much power as the V6 diesels or 6 cylinder diesels of uh, last decade. In this application it makes 245 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque uh, and that's enough to send this 1.8 ton uh, GLC to 100 kilometers an hour in just 6.5 seconds and on to a top speed of 231 kilometers an hour. So it's pretty brisk. As part of this facelift, uh, Mercedes has altered the front end of the GLC, giving it, well, more aggressive and completely reshaped uh, headlights, a new grille, and uh, new bumpers and uh, rear lights as well, as well as uh, new rim designs and some small changes inside. It really didn't need that much because it was already, well, it was one of the most accomplished uh, premium SUVs in its size bracket. I got to drive the pre-facelift version of this car. Um, the GLC 250 with uh, air suspension and um, I found it surprisingly uh, comfortable and uh, I remember getting out of that car and uh, thinking why would you need a bigger and even more comfortable SUV this one is already pretty much top-notch this tester I'm in right now doesn't have um, air suspension it rides on uh, regular steel springs and I was uh, curious how this setup was going to perform. But actually, it's, um, it's very well judged, I would say. There's a lot of give in the suspension. It doesn't feel overly stiff, but at the same time, it feels nowhere near as floaty as the, the GLC I tested with air suspension. This car is, um, it feels more connected to the road, and it also doesn't lean as much in the bends. For the record, the GLC that I tested with air suspension is actually the only car so far that has given me car sickness while at the wheel. I was driving it on a um, twisty mountain road and I had not uh, set the suspension in sport mode and it really leaned a lot, like a lot. And because it's an SUV, you really feel the motion, the side to side motion. It was totally unexpected. I was super comfortable while I was about to throw up, but I was about to throw up. This car is nowhere near as uh, floaty as that one. I wouldn't go so far as to call it sporty, but it's not anti-sporty. Don't get me wrong though, this car is still really comfortable. Um, it absorbs bumps very, very well. Its dampers are superb. It just seems really, really well judged. For a standard suspension setup for an SUV, it's really good. I must admit that I also like the look of the refreshed uh, GLC more so than that of the pre-facelift model. I really like this much more aggressive front end, which, uh, well, it completely transforms the look of the car for me. The rear end was pretty good already, they just uh, changed the inside design of the light clusters, but it really didn't need that much. And it's also maintained and improved upon the air of quality and sophistication that you get when you're on board. 
materials are really really good lots of soft touch stuff uh, and this facelift has uh, improved the infotainment considerably Mercedes has fitted it with its new MBUX The German manufacturer responsible for this car has fitted it with its new MBUX infotainment system. The digital gauge cluster in this case, uh, which is optional, but it's really good, uh, is displayed on a 12.3 um, inch screen, while the infotainment is displayed on a 10 inch touch screen. That is one of the most responsive I've ever touched and, um, well, the graphics are well they're superb you really can't see any of the pixels the new infotainment control method is also better than the rotary knob with the touchpad located above it i was never a huge fan of that control method that mercedes used in its models for well over a decade similar solution to what uh, lexus has been using for the last decade um, it's a touchpad with a click function and it also provides haptic feedback and it has a home button uh, as well as um, it gives you the option to swipe left or right to change the track and also back button it is flanked by the usual assortment of um, buttons and it also declutters the look of the of the center console Mercedes has kept what was good about this vehicle Mercedes has kept what was good about this interior which is pretty much the entire layout it just it's just so full of swoops and curves that it's um, well, it's quite special. And even though this is um, a C-Class equivalent uh, SUV, you really feel like it's a properly expensive piece of kit. I must also mention the fact that this car is, um, well, it's hugely refined. It's not that the previous equivalent model was not refined. It's just that this one is um, even better, even when you start up the engine there's uh, hardly any vibration that uh, makes its way into the into the passenger compartment and the engine itself is actually um, surprisingly hushed at least when you listen to it from inside the cabin because if you uh, go outside the car or lift the hood you'll notice that it's um it's just as clattery as any old diesel to be fair but from inside the cabin it's very well insulated and speaking of engines it's also really really strong it really does provide the pace of a v6 or a six cylinder a three liter engine i was quite surprised at how um, quickly this car takes off and you really do feel that it's capable of uh, six ish seconds to 100 kilometers an hour and since it has a formatic all-wheel drive low grip conditions don't really pose much of a threat it was pouring down with rain yesterday and i tried to do a few quick starts and the ESP light didn't even come on. It's quite impressive. It was really good. It's definitely a good car to get stuck in traffic in. The seats are super comfy and they're not the top of the range optional ones. They're just partly electrically adjustable. You have to move them manually fore and aft. But the driving position is really good. You sit quite low in this car for an SUV. I appreciate that. And the seats themselves don't have any pressure points and uh, they don't cause any excessive strain on your back. And I always like that in a car. And don't think that because it's a Mercedes or a premium German car, it's uh, just, it, it's good out of the box. Because some German cars have overly hard seats and uh, the driving position is sometimes not ideal. But this car uh, can't be faulted in this respect. And I'm not even an SUV guy. I mean, I don't really like SUVs that much. I would never buy one for myself. I don't see the point unless I live atop a mountain, which I don't. But for an SUV, this is a great blend between uh, being a high riding vehicle that you can take off road, kind of, and one that's still good on road where you're going to use it 99.9% .9 of the time. This car really is a proper piece of kit. It's very accomplished. And it's also a rather relaxing place to be, even when you cut people off like I, I just did now. You know the old cliche that a Mercedes 
is supposed to lower your heart rate and make you more relaxed. Well, even if this isn't the fanciest Mercedes out there, it still does the job and it still does exactly that. And it doesn't edge you on to uh, drive aggressively like um, a comparable BMW does. You know it's capable and you know it can go and grip and stop and uh, do all of those things, but you really don't want to subject it to it. You do definitely feel the bumps more in this uh, non-air suspension model than uh, in the one with air suspension. It's uh, notably more, uh, more plush, that one. To sum things up, Mercedes has made a good small SUV. What can I? To sum things up, Mercedes has made a really good small SUV even better. And it wasn't a hard task by any means because they already did most of the hard work making the original GLC uh, such, an, such an accomplished high rider. It's just a really nice place to spend time in. It's great for families and to be fair, you don't really need this uh, monster 2 liter diesel. The regular uh, GLC 220 with all wheel drive is plenty for <laughs>